One thing I really like to do before I start writing any code is to make sure I have a better high level understanding of like what I'm about to write and how that code kind of all interacts with each other. So with that being said, I wanted to do a video kind of walking you through how I diagram kind of different components or system design when I'm building a larger type of system. So I have a app idea, a really simple app idea where I want to take a bunch of thumbnails that I downloaded from YouTube and I want to be able to rate them from good or bad, right? Just a binary classifier basically. But I want to have that displayed in a UI that has the bad or it has um, a thumbnail like in the center. It might have a bad button or a good button and someone can just go in in the UI and click bad or good and basically rate it. So it's kind of like a an Amazon MTurk if you've used that before. But the idea is I'm basically going to give this UI to someone to just kind of rate different thumbnails. And I have a data set of like 5,000 thumbnails. So that's why I'm trying to build like a UI to speed up this process. But all in all, uh, I like to come in here and start drawing some diagrams. So I know exactly what I'm going to build before I start building it. So to imagine this, we have a file or folder that has 5,000 th thumbnails. I know that I need to display those thumbnails on a web page with some buttons. And then those buttons, when I click them, they need to probably hit some type of API which could probably be hosted on the same machine that has those thumbnails. And then the API needs to basically just move those thumbnails into a different folder. You could use like MongoDB to keep track of the, the metadata or the ratings of these, but I want to keep this pretty simple. So let's just kind of diagram this out. So let's assume we got a user and I like using different icons for like APIs versus the UIs. I like using clouds for UIs. I don't really have a strong convention that I follow. I just like using colors and I'll have like an actor here. So this is the, the user actually on the UI right here. And I'm gonna say that they um, a login and view the page. All right, so when they view the page, what that needs to do is that probably needs to hit some type of REST API to get a thumbnail. So I will go over here and I'll say, fetch a thumbnail and sometimes I'll just start designing like I don't know the rest API so I'll say that's like a git request to slash thumbnails okay so that'll give me a random thumbnail maybe it has like a thumbnail ID in it I don't know that's kind of lower level implementation detail that we don't need to cover but let's say that hits an API and hopefully it's not too spread out so you can see this on the recording and what that needs to do is probably do some type of database query or do some type of file system search. So again, I'm gonna to try to steer clear from using Mongo in this tutorial. I'm just gonna to try to read directly from the disk. So I will say this needs to do an LS. So list all the files on thumbnail directory. And then that probably needs to return one of them. So I need to kind of, let me refactor this so I have more space. I kind of screwed this up. In a sense, this is like the request and the response. So I'll do this. All right, I'm just gonna redo this one. I messed it up, guys. All right, delete this. I'm gonna click on this little dot here and paste in that. And I'm gonna make sure, sometimes it's hard to use this application, man. All right, there, that makes sense. So this will do an ls on the directory and then I just want to get back one random thumbnail. So send back one random thumbnail. And then we probably want to move this guy over here because we need to, why is this not moving? There we go. All right, so the UI would need to display that random, random thumbnail. Maybe it does like an image request or something. I'll say displays thumbnail with two buttons, good or bad. All right, so that is like a high level overview of what needs to happen when a user logs into the UI. Uh, I'll just say disk here. I'm also gonna add an express API here, doesn't really matter. So I think building out these type of flows kind of help me understand what I need to build because now at this point I can see, okay, I need to make an express app, I need to add an endpoint that accepts a git request that needs to basically do an ls on some type of thumbnail directory so in node i could do like a run uh, an exec command to basically run ls so i could kind of download a package to just dive into the file 
dive into the directory and get all the files by name. And then I need to kind of load in the binary data from that file and send it back to the user. So this should probably get back some type of image. And then I need to display the image on the UI for the user. So this whole flow, I mean, it makes kind of sense to me um, and I have a high level view of what I need to do. So I can kind of like go through these steps one by one and implement this user story. And then what I would like to do is kind of copy this because they're kind of two flows. I'm going to copy this. And then the other flow is if you click on that good button. So I'm going to say clicks, clicks on a vote button. All right. So let's say the user sees the thumbnail and they think this is a pretty good thumbnail. I'm going to click the good button. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete all this placeholder text. Um, so they click on a vote button. Let's say it's good. I'm going to, I'm going to hit a, a thumbnail, an endpoint that has like the name of the thumbnail or ID. And then I'm going to say vote. Probably a post request. So basically they are going to do a post request to thumbnail slash ID slash vote. And I can use that to basically in my express API, I can move a folder or move a file from one folder to the next. I'm going to go ahead and put an arrow here and say move, move thumbnail to either good slash bad directory, All right? So really simple functionality. Again, we're not using a database. We're just using uh, the file system, but this works. If this solves the problem with I, I have a thousand, five thousand thumbnails in one directory and I need to move them into different directories, this application will work. And I can point anyone to this UI and they can help me write thumbnails. So that should basically be a majority of the logic. And then I could say return, return 200. All right. So. All right, so when the thumbnail is finally moved from the whatever directory it's into the proper target directory, I just need to return like a 400 status code. And then the UI, the user, uh, needs to like fetch another thumbnail. So I, technically they could just refresh the page if you want to keep this as simple as possible, but that is kind of like lower level implementa implementation detail that you don't need to worry about in this flow. So using this, I'll take this diagram and I'll start loading up my code editor and I'll start implementing some of this stuff. So like I'll create a React app, I'll make a page uh, that can display a thumbnail and shows two buttons. I won't actually have those buttons do anything yet, but then I'll probably have some logic where I can do a post request that's accepted here, move some files, returns to 400. So I like to do this. If you found this useful, I would definitely recommend that you try this as well, especially if you're a beginner, because visualizing what you're about to do can be kind of difficult. Um, versus an experienced person kind of already sees how these things interconnect, how the user flows work in their head, and they might not need to write this stuff down. But again, if you're working on a team with other people, it's really good to be able to show them your ideas that are in your head and get them down on paper so that you can document the user flows so that other people can see them in the future. And then also everyone's on the same page of like, okay, this is what the user needs to do. And this is what the systems need to do. Because sometimes these can get more complicated. You could like send out emails, you could generate PDFs, you could have this hitting multiple databases. And when it gets to that level of complexity, you really need some type of diagramming to help people understand what's going on. So I may continue to build something like this on this channel. If you want to follow along, maybe using the MERN stack. I think it'll be, you know, a couple hour video it won't be too hard to follow along. So keep that in mind. If you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below if there's a different type of software you like to use for diagramming, or if you ever kind of write out in pencil and paper, like what you're about to do, I find it useful. And then if you're new to this channel, be sure to give me a subscribe because I'm going to be publishing other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better software engineer.